Have you lost your job? Have you lost a loved one? Are you exhausted caring for your parents, for your kids? Well, you can find immediate relief when you read Sheila Mack's new number one bestseller, Bootstraps and Bra Straps. It contains the boots formula to move from rock bottom back into action in any situation, especially right now. If life has knocked you down, pick yourself up with bootstraps and bra straps. Get your copy at Mac. Are you ready for a reboot? Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. History reminds us those hit hardest often become the change makers. This year, we've all hit crazy economic, social, and emotional rock bottoms. We all get knocked down. Something hits globally, locally, personally. It affects our health, finances, our relationships. We have to recreate a business or career. Each show, Sheila and her special guest will be sharing their reboot stories, guiding you with real solutions to upgrade and up-level emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. Here on NBC's KCAA Radio. If you're ready to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and bra straps, enjoy a listen. Here's Sheila. All right. Welcome to the Sheila Matt Show, reality at its finest. Here we have real people sharing real stories and actionable steps to help you reinvent, rebuild, and reboot your business and personal life on your terms. Today, I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and today we have a very special guest that I'm going to introduce. And so let's see here. And my information is not showing up. <laughs> Okay, here we go. All right. And so today we have special guest, Lakinia Francis. Lakinia, um, well, she was looking for a source of additional income that wouldn't require too much of an investment on either time or money. She created the I Crave Vending, vending Program. Um, she is actually the founder and discovered an opportunity to start up a small vending machine service company. Through the initial startup cost, um, it was also reasonably affordable, and her efforts took no time away from her full-time work. Lakinia found that finding high-quality equipment that wouldn't break the bank and then obtaining locations <laughs> in which to place her machines provided to be a challenge. So her tenacity finally paid off after months of searching for a used machine that met her expectations. She was able to soon start enjoying the profits after placing her vending machine in a local mechanic shop. Wow. Well, yeah. that's interesting. So I can't wait to hear all about that. Welcome to the show, LaKenya. All right. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to share um, some insight with everyone. Yes, and now this show is based on my new best-selling book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. And we've had some situations this last almost two years now. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yes, and so I'd love for you to share a time in your business or personal life where you experienced a difficult situation and how you got back on track. Um, well... I'll kind of pinpoint it to vending. And this is actually related to um, the times that we're in. And I love to share this with people um, because prior to that, it's something that I never even thought of. So um, I had a location one time, right? And I went to go visit the location. And this is right after, um, you know, things started opening back up after COVID. So I went to visit the location and um, I went there and I noticed that there was tape on the machine. I'm like, what's going on? So anyways, the owner, uh, there was a language barrier, but she was able to get someone on the phone and basically the owner of the business sold it and didn't uh -huh. even tell me. Oh, so the new owner, uh, she wanted the machines gone because she wanted to use the space for something else. So, um, you know, sometimes people always give the upside of businesses and never really tell the dark side. So, um, that was, you know, that was kind of challenging because it was, I didn't know, I just spent it, finished spending money on product. So I had to think and think quick. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, I ended up selling those machines for profit, um, mm -hmm. which is something else that's, you know, pretty interesting. But the whole point of that is I didn't have a contract in place or some yeah. sort of agreement. And then had, I would have, 
um, it would have probably saved me <laughs> that mm -hmm. headache and stuff. So I actually use that as a, um, a really good point to uh, share with others who are getting into the industry to get you an agreement <laughs> before you right. just shake hands on it. So, right. yeah. so that's my tough time. Wow. Well, that's good that you were able to make a profit on the sale and move forward still. And then the lesson of the contract showed up and coming from a real estate background, even if somebody has a contract with you or for a vending machine, or let's say um, they, they used to do a lot of these contracts for the um, phone sales mm -hmm. on your roof, um, things like that, or a billboard, that's, that contract goes with the property upon the sale. And so they have to let the buyer know, and then you know the buyer can of the new of the property can buy you out, mm. or honor the contract. Usually, so that that's something, and there's clauses that you can add to your contract. But usually, that's the case, mm -hmm. and um, so it it is something that you have recourse even if things get sold in the future. Although people are going to do what they're going to do, <laughs> and right. Take Sometimes they, yeah, they take matters into their own hands, but then you right. have that to protect you. And I remember years ago going through learning how to manage property on the side. I raised six kids and worked really mm. hard, and mostly paid for everything myself and didn't have the support of a, another income and uh, three adopted, three, three from birth. But, but really it's a big family to raise. And so mm -hmm. I was always doing this or that. And I, I managed properties for a long time. And in managing properties, I remember I had to learn the legal part about the contract mm. and the legal things. And they sent me to an attorney and the attorney would say, well, they want to save money. So I'm going to tell you <laughs> what to do and then I'll edit it. And so I learned uh. about these legal contracts and I thought, oh, this is such a bother. I don't want to get into all this. And yeah. it really blessed me. Yeah, over the mm -hmm. that knowledge you yeah, can't it, take that away from you it's yours now yes so. yes and so sometimes our obstacles or difficulties are really gifts and it's hard to see them at the moment i just saw it as this is not what i signed up for <laughs> exactly time. yeah so it was definitely something now i'd love to hear more about how the vending machine industry works and how did you get get started in that Right. <laughs> so I guess I'll start with how I got started with it. Um, so this is pretty funny. Um, I was not using my spare time productively. So I was like, I got to find something to get into. I wouldn't mind making some extra money, but let me find something that um, I don't have to sell my soul to get started. <laughs> um, and that's realistic, right? That's realistic for a working person. And I honestly stumbled across vending and I'm like, whoa, but hold on. I thought that you had to be some kind of big company to get into this. Yeah. Um, and I started doing research. And um, one day I just said, hey, I'm buying machines and because I've already done the research. And at this point, you just got to do it. <laughs> and I, I literally um, from the very beginning with just buying the machines, I learned so much. Um, it cost me some money, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, but what I was able to do, I was able to kind of turn that around, right, and monetize from my knowledge and just kind of help everyone else who was trying to get into it. And um, over the last two years that I've been helping others, um, it's so interesting because a lot of people don't stop to realize that vending is just it's not just for snacks and drinks. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's really not. And so. Um, I'm really helping a lot of people get into different types of vending. So, you know, if someone wanted to get in vending now, I would ask them the first thing, well, what type of vending do you want to do? Right. Um, because one of the most popular things that I'm helping with, and this actually happened during the pandemic, and I was very surprised, like, what? You know, uh, the beauty industry. Mm -hmm. Man, I learned that regardless of what we're going through, what times we're in, people are going to pay to look good and feel good. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and they're just going to upkeep themselves, men and women. And yeah. so I, I got a lot of people that were interested in selling beauty supplies from the vending machine. Mm -hmm. So, you know, of course, I started building my resources and my Rolodex. And uh, that's one of the things that I was, uh, you know, helping people get into. And I'm still doing that now. 
um, it's the beauty supplies. So that's one type of vending. Um, another unique one is uh, the CBD vending. Um, mm -hmm. So the CBD products inside of the vending machine, um, wow. of course, snacks and drinks, candy machines. I've been working with a lot of parents, right? They're like, hey, you know, I, I want to start my kids a little business, um, yeah. something that's it's fun, you know, and it's not um, they'll get excite, excited with it and, and they'll kind of learn some some financial skills. And so I do a lot of, uh, you know, one on ones with the candy machines where you put the quarter. I'm sure everybody's used one of those before. Um, so so that's that's just one thing, you know, uh, figuring out the type of business uh, vending that you want to get into. And then can you guess what's the most difficult part about it? <laughs> um, when Place? it comes to placement, mm -hmm. placement, finding the right location for your machine. Um, you have to think about it. Like, how are you benefiting from it? Because it's your machine. Right. right? And it's going to be placed in somebody's business um, or establishment and people are going to use it. But in order for you to make money from it, you have to have the people there. So you have to be very strategic and careful about the location that you're trying to acquire. So that is actually really, really probably the most important part of the business. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can buy anything anywhere. People are selling vending machines everywhere. You just got to look. Um, but finding the right location, it takes some research, probably like similar to real estate, you know, yeah. Um, where, you, you know, the, the location and, you know, those things play a big part. So the location is probably the most difficult part about the business, but it is the most important part <laughs> mm -hmm. um, because it allow you to be, uh, you know, there's some people, man, they have some really profitable places and they're making tons of money um, more than we, and we kind of underestimate like, Oh, it's a vending machine. You know, it's just a dollar or two. And there's some people that they do that for a living, you know, mm -hmm. um, multiple machines and, you know, and, and it's not a hundred percent passive, but it is semi-passive because once you get the machine and you get it in a place, all you have to do is maintain it, keeping it stocked with your, you know, your drinks and your snacks or whatever product you're selling. And, you know, you may visit once a week, twice, twice, twice a month, you know, every other week, um, however the flow is. And yeah, it's actually a really interesting like side hustle. Um, it's actually kind of fun and it just really fit my personality. <laughs> um, nice. because my mom always tells me you're like a big kid, <laughs> but you're an adult. <laughs> so yeah. it's, 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 uh, it's especially in the, um, the background that I come in, you know, with, with, profession, you know, uh, more serious. And yeah, this was, uh, something that allowed me to kind of be myself. Right. I didn't have to dress up. I yeah. literally can, you know, go in and make conversation with the people in the place and, you know, ask them what they want in the machine. And yeah, so it was a cute little fun business to get going. And, um, yeah, so, um, yeah. <laughs> wow. Now, okay. So what is your other, thing that you do other than the vending? Um, I won't get very, very specific, but I do work um, a, a, a nine to five um, and I teach adults. Wow. Yeah. And I actually used to be, prior to that, I, I was a, um, a high school and a middle school teacher. Nice. So, yeah. So when it came back around to um, this vending and, and helping other people, that's why I really found my space because, you know, people would start asking like, how do you get into that? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, that's when I started holding consultations. I'm like, man, I, I love this. <laughs> um, you know, being so resourceful for, to people. And one thing I learned is that you can have a ton of knowledge, but not everybody can, you know, get the information across the mm -hmm. same way. And this was just something natural for me. So it actually kind of tied into what I'm already, you know, used to doing, you know, uh, kind of instructing and teaching and guiding. So, so yeah. Perfect. I love that because it's helping people, you know, just, just about anybody can use a little side business <laughs> that's semi-passive and yes, right now. And with, with the situation, <laughs> the way it is many times people aren't able to get, to get to where they need to go, or it's just more convenient to pick something up, whether it's a snack or beauty products, 
I mean, I learned over this lockdown, I had to learn how to do my own nails. I had to right. learn all these crazy things that I never That's did before. And, you know, and it's like, okay, some things are still nice to go do, but then there's other things, nails. I would pay for the, what is it? The powder dip. Mm. Is it? Five mm -hmm. or a hundred dollars. It's expensive. Depending on what whatever they did, and you go <laughs> a couple times a month. It's and expensive. You know what's really ridiculous? You can get that product and do it yourself for, mm -hmm. and it gives the same look. It doesn't Wait. take that long at all, mm -hmm. and you pay for one visit. That sixty-five to a hundred dollars, you get all the supplies you need for the whole year. Yeah. Like, well, you know. And I saved the drive back and forth to the place, waiting mm -hmm. to be seen. And the whole <clears throat> two or three hours of whatever else they do that you really don't need to have done that makes you feel like <laughs> something special. And yeah. It's like, and, I, and, you know, then I'll go do something else with that extra little side money that that's more important to me or whatever, mm -hmm. you know? And so, so that there's things that have changed and to have that, you know, some type of a vending machine for all that, that does make a difference. It does. I was talking to a gentleman recently here in Miami where I am and um, he lives downtown, you know, and he was just kind of just kind of telling me a little bit about himself and the building that he lives in. He says, hey, there's a market downstairs um, and they charge an arm and a leg for everything. But in order for me to get basic things, I have to go get the car and you know, think about it downtown, you know, parking. And so I actually am collaborating with him to do a convenience machine for some of the buildings in the area. So the convenience machine will sell all sorts of things, all sorts of miscellaneous items, you know, deodorant, toothpaste, toothbrush, um, Tylenol, um, you know, not just snacks and drinks. It's a convenience machine. So I, I told him, I said, put yourself in the idea that if you needed to go and get a phone charger or something like that, um, how far is Walgreens? He's like, yeah, it's a few blocks. I'd have to catch an Uber. Or I said, so imagine if you had a machine downstairs, right, um, mm -hmm. with these things in there. Yes, that makes yes. so much sense. <laughs> you know, in Beverly Hills, it's so stupid. You have to drive a half an hour to go like 12 blocks really? or 15 blocks and then you have to pay um if there's no parking you have to pay valet or walk i don't know how many miles to get to where you're gonna wow. go and then you get so you've already spent the gas which is uh, okay in in our area it's five six dollars a gallon minimum what? Uh, yeah and and that's just the way it is and then you've got to pay the valet or the parking meter. If you're lucky, you get the meter. Um, yeah. And they only take a credit card now, no coins, because it's that expensive per hour. Oh wow. And and then you finally get to your appointment, and then you or you're shopping, and then you got to buy the stuff or pay for the whatever Man. it is. And and it's it's kind of ridiculous. It's it's really it's like I plan my trips to go out, <laughs> and I usually. <laughs> It used to be before before all this crazy pandemic that I would just take an Uber or a Lyft. Mm -hmm. You actually spend less money than paying for all the parking. Right. No, that is true. That is true. Um, and, and I learned they, it. <laughs> they've, raised, they've raised the prices on the Uber and Lyft. Yeah, they have. Yeah. So, I mean, with the gas and everything else, it makes sense. But yeah. and they're, they're limited. So now it's not like before. You could wait um, an hour, half an mm -hmm. hour to an hour for an Uber or Lyft, whereas before in the city, you would have one every, you know, in a minute, they just swing minute. around, there they are. And yeah. so that's that's the situation. So this is such a good time. It is. Doing. And um, I'd love to hear how you work with people, how people would get started with you to actually you know, start a little vending machine service? Um, well, um, really, well, my platform that I hang out, I will call it hanging out at is uh, Instagram, right? So I'm usually there. Um, and of course, I have my my website, um, iCraveVending.com. And I find what people like the most is not just to buy a course or an ebook, they like to speak with me. And so my approach is kind of different. I actually help everybody hands on. 
So I kind of, you know, they booked their call. And um, from there, they have um, access to me via text. I get people texting me all the time, you know, because I help them with everything, starting their business structure, um, you know, IRS stuff, <laughs> um, insurance, everything. So I kind of provide that real hands on guidance mm -hmm. uh, so that they won't make the mistake that I did, <laughs> you know, and have to figure it out at the end. And I can just help them go through the right steps the first time. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah. And I'm always posting new content, even for someone who is not quite ready to start a business, but they, they like the idea and it's interesting to them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I try to post things that, uh, you know, get people's mind going and, you know, um, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun too. I love it. <laughs> yes. And it's, yeah. And it's, and it's so interesting, the power of, uh, the internet, because here I am, I'm located in Miami, uh, but I'm helping people. I have a lot of people that have helped out in, in your area over in, in California, um, but everywhere all over, um, the U S I've had people I've helped in Canada, um, Europe just recently. And this blew my mind. Um, I had, uh, some people from Kuwait, Wow. That Yeah. They have some business over here and, you know, with coordinating with me and some people to help them out. I was like, wow, that is big. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So it's pretty interesting. And I mean, if anybody is is interested, I love, you know, helping them out and educating them a little bit more. Um, yeah. And I'm on all social platforms under I Crave Vending. And so, yeah, that's where you can find me at. <laughs> I crave vending. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is wonderful. Wow, mm -hmm. that sounds like something that just a fun project. To, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's not a big investment. What would you say the investment is to get started with the machine and all the, what is that? What, what if somebody. Um, so let's say you're doing, let me give you an, with the candy machine. So you can get started with that for about $300. Or the business finding oh and something else that uh people do in the vending machine business is they they when they don't want to go and find a location for themselves i'll partner them up with someone that'll do it for them so wow. even yeah yeah really like a ready-made <laughs> mm -hmm. um you just need the motivation and i'll keep on you uh but anyways uh so, so for someone who wants to do candy vending to just to start out small and maybe do something you can do that with about three hundred dollars um, let's say you want to do traditional snacks and drinks. Um, if you're going on the U side with like a used machine, um, with everything you can get started for, I want to say maybe about $2,000, um, you know, buying the machine. And honestly, depending, I don't want to say it's, you know, set in stone, but man, sometimes you can find a machine. Um, I see them all the time, you know, for sale, uh, you know, as low as, six hundred dollars for one yeah. machine so yeah so that's more or less of a price range on the higher end to be to be <laughs> you know yeah. a little bit fair um so yeah it's not that expensive to get started and believe it or not Sheila, I, I actually help uh most of the people that i help are already business owners yeah, yeah. it's, it's interesting i'm like what yeah they're like yeah we want to diversify our investments and you know get into some other things so that part is really interesting that most of the people that I'm helping already own a business. So yeah, it's pretty cool. And it's a, a lot of fun. <laughs> that is good. Now, so that's for the machine and then they have to put money out to like stock the machine and business licensing and da, 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 da. Yeah. So add like <clears throat> that to that 500 to a thousand depending or, or less or maybe, maybe 500, not a thousand. Okay. Because if you're just doing snacks and drinks, of course, the name of the game is to get it at wholesale, right? Yes. So we're not going to pay the same price that when you go in the grocery store and buy a box of chips. It's not going to be the same price because you're buying at wholesale. Mm -hmm. um, so you're not going to spend that much. And I don't recommend anyone just, you know, and people do it out of fun. They're like, oh, my God, I'm going to pick up this. I'm going to pick up that. I'm going <laughs> to, you know, I tell people when you're first starting out, take it slow. Buy a few things so you can kind of get to know what people like. Right. right? Yeah. So there's a lot of little small factors that go into it. It's not just, oh, let me just go pick up this and put it in there. Um, but yeah, but but yeah, I would say about five hundred dollars. Yes. So and you need to have your business license and everything else in place and the contracts and you walk people through all those steps. 
Yes, uh, I've yeah. I've gathered resources and spent a lot of time where I kind of went through all 50 states and kind of found out what are the requirements for each state to have a vending machine. Some states you don't need anything, honestly. Um, some states you do. Uh, yeah. And, 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 and yeah, it's no one answer. It's really individualized. And uh, but yeah, help them out with everything. And, you know, vending machine insurance, uh, everything. <laughs> wow, I didn't know about the insurance. That's that's interesting. Yeah. And if you are just tuning in, this is NBC Sheila Mack show here on KCAA radio, the station that leaves no listener behind. I'm your host, Sheila Mack. And today we are talking about how to start a very profitable vending machine business and so i am just going to share one more thing and then we'll get back to the interview you need a guide to show you how we get through a situation like this to give you resources and to help you get out of the emotional pea soup fog of dealing with a crisis and the resulting fallout i've been there and I'm here to help you. To grab a copy of my new best-selling book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. It is now available on Audible, Amazon, Kindle, and wherever fine books are sold. This I never even knew this this exists. Um, so age plays a difference. Um, you know the area that you're in. The Man, it's so many little things that we don't think about um, that really make uh, or break the business, you know, as far as your revenue and what you're gaining um, in your sales. You know, you have to it, it's like playing a game. You got to kind of figure it out. Right. You can throw some stuff out there, but essentially you're testing. And then once you figure out what they like, you put more of that. Right. And, mm -hmm. um, and you just kind of rearrange and, and kind of go from there. So it's a building thing. You know, I mean, you might put stuff in there and get a hit, but, you know, you're going to learn the location eventually. And like, you know, like I said, you know, some ple I got a guy, he has a machine at a car lot and he was telling me that, hey, the drinks are flying off, the, but the snacks aren't. Oh, so, um, you know, and that's OK. That's normal. I mean, it, it really just depends on where you are. And, you know, they're hot. They're, these are salesmen that are out, you know, probably trying to sell cars and they, they just want more drinks than they want to snack. Maybe they don't right. have the time to snack like that. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Your your um, your demographics is going to really drive the direction of what your, your you know, the products that you're going to put in there. Very mm -hmm. similar to you. Um, how are you going to display it? And just, I mean, and that's interesting that you said it breaks it on down to the music. Yeah. That's, oh, that's yeah. pretty cool. That's pretty. I mean, we had the first store was in Montrose, California, mm -hmm. uh, near the Rose Bowl on the other side mm -hmm. of Pasadena. And, and it was a um, community of people that were mostly grandparent age mm -hmm. and played when I first, I was 23, so I was playing like the modern music. And people were like, oh, I can't uh -huh. see noise, you know, and, and it was like, okay, cool. And then I brought in Frank Sinatra and, uh -huh. and, and, and music that's more calming and peaceful and that they're familiar with. And yep. it was, they would stay and, they, and I'd have tea and different things. And, mm. you know, I do concerts. On the weekend, I would have live performers do live wow. music. I had 5,000 square feet. So we like moved mm -hmm. things. People would come in and listen to the music and they would buy. And, <laughs> and, and so, but I had a change. And so like, that was one of the rules that, you know, we, we only have to play these particular types. Now, being that young, I played my own music and it was not that music. <laughs> Obviously, uh, yeah. the car, the windows would shake, you know, when you're, but, and, and that would be fine. But I, I made that example and it was really, I mean, the revenue just doubled. It was ridiculous. Really? Just, you think it's just music. Wow. And that, that really, that's pretty interesting. That yeah. is very interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, wow. So I guess <laughs> you had to, I guess you had to analyze each area and see, okay, well, what type of, you know, what's our age range? Um, you know, you know, what type of people are we having here? Um, what kind of music do they listen to? Oh, yeah. 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 Monrovia was different. Uh, Sierra Madre was different. Burbank next to the studios. I had a big mm -hmm. place. And so that was a completely different. And actually, the studios would buy 
and I would hunt for them and they would give me their list of what they needed for the next show. What? And I forced <laughs> those. And so it was a completely different and you would have different fun music and it was a completely different deal. Mm -hmm. And and so I learned so much and my my clients were my teachers. So <laughs> mm, they taught yeah, you. Definitely. definitely. And that's good. And and those are things that you learn that look, it sticks with you. You 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 know, it doesn't go anywhere. And so that's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. Pretty interesting. Now, sounds, what you're doing sounds like such an incredible way to either start a side business if you're, you know, a, a parent or um, working and maybe your hours are getting cut or things are getting weird right now with the rules changing and maybe oh, you're forced to get them or who knows what, but you know, it is what it is and we have to do our best. And so to have this, this is a great way. It's better to invest in a small business and make adjustments as you go than to go spend the money on, well, this is sad. Let's just go waste this money on whatever. And it's <laughs> an education. You know, you're paying to to learn when you start this business, you're, you're learning something as you go. So if you have young, like I'm thinking, okay, my college kids and I are probably going to be talking to you. We're going to have a discussion after this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. If they can figure yeah. out something, uh, maybe the college or near the college will let them do something nearby. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, because they're they're open where we are. Um, certain places, um, some of the kids are going to colleges that are open. As summer, but, but yeah. or, what what options are there? Even if the colleges are closed where you're at, where you can you can have something that would be available for for people in that age group. That would be fun, and it's kind of like your first business experience to really it is. Get out and have a, a mentor, a coach like you that that knows the ropes, and then that's a really great. I think that's better than a class. Then, yeah, you know, it is. And <laughs> this is like open source learning here. And let me tell you, um, I had a guy one time. I thought this was really cool. Um, how I even got into, you know, helping with the kids and stuff. The lady, she 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 wrote me on Instagram first. And she said, listen, my son is always getting birthday money. I refuse to let him keep throwing it away. I want him to do something. And he was so excited, <laughs> you know, about getting his candy machine. And I also tell people to look at it like this. Um, even if you have a teenager, right? We all know how teenagers are, you know, going through things and they kind of, you know, distance themselves while they're growing and learning themselves. You can also use this as a bonding mechanism, you know, between yeah. you and your kid with something that's interesting, right? Um, and you spend that one dedicated day. Look, hey, listen, uh, Sheila, these are our days that we go and check our machines on Saturdays. OK, and we'll go shop for our, 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 our product. And um, yeah, and, and, and you can use that as a building tool and you're teaching them at the same time. And you're going to let them, you know, do the counting and, and kind of let them be accountable for kind of tracking the inventory. Although there's ways to do that technically, but, you know, get them involved um, and. And you might not really think about it, but that's a bonding time. So that's another way I like to look at it, too. Uh, when we're talking about parents and teenagers or kids. So it's and it's fun. They're not they're going to love it. Trust me. They get excited when they get. Oh, man, it's exciting. You know, so, yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. you know, when I had my stores, I, I finally closed them down and, and uh, really? just the buildings out. But when I had the stores open. Mm -hmm. That was one thing I did raising my kids. Sometimes they were just with me. And, mm -hmm. and so I had an, a complete section that was educational toys. Uh -huh. And especially for the, you know, for the grandmas or the people in the studios, they would come in and they'd be like, oh, yeah, I want my kids to learn something. And the, my mm. kids would go with me to order the, the toys. And they would come in on the weekend or a day off and they would play a game in front of the adults. And they'd be like, holy smokes, the kids are living mad. <laughs> I, and they'd buy it for all their grandkids or all their kids. And and they got to keep a percentage mm. of the profit. Mm, and so parents, they all have their own little side business now. And, you know, some of them are beyond college already. And it's just <clears throat> that education was so good and it yep. was our our bonding time and they were so proud of themselves and when they made a mistake and ordered the wrong thing 
Mm -hmm. going to the swap meet and selling it there. <laughs> Whatever. Yep. Let's start over again. So it was a beautiful thing for us. Yeah. And they'll never forget those times, you know. They, yeah. they won't. And those are experiences and lessons that they still think about. Trust me, you know, uh, even if they don't tell you, they think about it. And, you know, and, and, you know, those are things that you just can't take back. You know, it's an experience. Right. And so oh, yes. um, you, yes. you got a lot of exposure to, to different things, uh, entrepreneurship, you know, finances, money, you know, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> you know, social skills, you know, being around other people, just so many different things that we really don't um, think about. But, you know, as you're reflecting, you're like, wow, you know, I really, you know, with this, bringing them with me on Saturdays, I really, um, you know, gave a lot of enrichment in their life that, uh, you know, we didn't see at the time. But look, it kind of developed them into, you know, groomed them into, you know, the the people they are now. <laughs> oh, yes. And so, I, I think it's, I was a teacher also for, for many what? years. Montessori <laughs> and then Waldorf. And, and because, you know, some of the kids needed that and they're mm -hmm. more creative or whatever. And I, six of them and going private was not something. And I got to have wow. the kids with me. And then because I taught there, they got the either a discount or free, depending on which mm -hmm. school it was. And so it was really something I needed to do for my kids, but I learned so much and it was such a gift. And one of the things that I saw happening because there were parents that maybe did their homework for the kids uh -oh. you know, and, or there were parents that gave the kids so much high school, a brand new, I don't know, nice sporty car, mm -hmm. them, like out to lunch. And I'm like, you know what? That's such a disservice. All right. Kids. It is not a good thing at all. And it, it just, it tells them, I don't think you're capable of doing this on your own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to show you how to stand on your own two feet. Whereas, you know, when your kids get involved, they value work. So when my kids ended up going for their first jobs outside mm -hmm. of working in my, my store and business, they got like management positions at 18 and 19 years old. They were yeah. helping the... The, the business run the books or they were locking up at the Starbucks or whatever it was because they had that, I don't know, it's like pride in, in work and, uh, and a work ethic. Work they ethic. Yeah, that this work ethic, um, if they need to call out because they're going to go on an event, it's two or three weeks in advance notice they'll yeah. give or that kind of yeah. thing. Or really, they just, and, and so they could be trusted in that sense because they had that and they get promotions more and, you know, at work and, and so many blessings. So mm -hmm. that's something they don't teach it in a book. It is our quick break time. And this is NBC Sheila Mack show here on. If you are just tuning in, this is NBC Sheila Mack show here on KCAA radio, the station that leaves no listener behind. I'm your host, Sheila Mack. And today I wanted to share with you about my favorite new tea. It is lovemysupertea.com. And let me let you hear a little bit more about it. Tahibo Tea Club's original Pure Pouty Arco Super Tea helps you build the red corpuscles in the blood which can carry oxygen to our organs and cells. Our organs and cells need oxygen to regenerate themselves. The immune system needs oxygen to develop and cancer dies in oxygen. So the tea is great for healthy people and it can truly be miraculous for someone fighting a potentially life-threatening disease due to an infection, diabetes, or cancer. A one-pound package of tea is $34.95 plus shipping. To order, please visit lovemysupertea.com. That's love, L-O-V-E, my, M-Y, super, S-U-P-E-R, T, T -E -A, dot com. So the complete website is lovemysupertea.com or call 818-288-4128 Monday through Saturday, 9 to 5, California time. That's lovemysupertea.com at 818-288-4128. And now back to the show. They don't. <laughs> that's they. They really don't. And um, you know, that's just a combination of you know exposure and um, good parenting. 
And so, uh, you know, it's not about giving, giving, giving. What can I give them? Can I give them expensive shoes? And what values and morals can you instill in them so that when they're ready to get on their own, because at some point they have to, it doesn't matter how much money you have, right. um, they're well equipped, right? They're well equipped and they have good morals and values. So, um, yeah. you know, it, it was worth it. It was worth it because now, look, you're seeing it. You're like, wow, okay, these, these kids can get out there and work and they can hold down managerial positions and they can go in there and, you know, help them count and, uh, you know, balance the books. Uh, and right. it's because of what you did, you know, yeah. when they were younger. <laughs> and I mean, the look on their face and the pride they have in their self when they bought their own first car. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, yeah, okay, well, maybe <laughs> I helped out with insurance here and there. Yeah, but that's okay. Whatever. But, but, you know, they got to do that. And there was such a, a pride, whereas the other kids, that and maybe got to get the car bought for them and it's a nice new car. Mm -hmm. They didn't take such care. There were more accidents and more, you know, because <laughs> it was not something they produced. And exactly. so there's something I feel like I knew when you can afford to buy your own car, you're going to be responsible enough to be safe, to exactly. follow the laws to to be careful don't drink and drive don't do these crazy things and and so that made a big difference mm -hmm. in um, their ability and ability to be responsible too so this is a great way to start out i i can't wait to do the vending machine here and um we'll probably do it in a couple different places because i have kids in different states oh really okay <laughs> Six, you know, and and so um, yeah, that's wonderful. And yeah. for those tuning in, I'd love for you to share one more time where they can connect to get started. Sure, sure, sure. Um, so if you're a Facebook user, because I know some people prefer one platform over the other, um, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram under I Crave Vending. So that's I K R A V E um, Vending. Okay. Uh, you can find me either in, on either platform. If you write me, I will write you back. <laughs> I enjoy it. I'll respond to you. Um, or you can email me. Some people like to email. So info at icravevending.com. Um, That's another way to catch me. Um, or icravevending.com, the website. Okay. So you got a few options. <laughs> you got a few options there. Um, and so, you know, anybody that's uh, looking to learn, I'm willing to help. Outstanding. And and the last question I always have for my guests is, if you could go back in time, what advice would you give your younger self? That's easy. <laughs> if I can go back, if I can go back in time, the advice that I would give my younger self um, is probably to uh, have taken care of your credit a little bit better when you were younger. When I was in college, I didn't appreciate it. I didn't understand it. Um, and man, you know, it can take you really far. So if I can go back and say, hey, Lakinya, um, you know, take your credit as serious as you, you know, you take your health. And, you know, in my early 20s, you know, and, and I think that would have, not that I regret anything, but it would have had some different opportunities um, available with, with, with that. And I think anybody that's an adult can kind of attest to that, you know, um, mm -hmm. with credit, it really is, uh, is, is key in it. And it really does matter. <laughs> yes. So that will probably be the one thing. And, um, and if I had to tell somebody that was 23, I would say, take care of your credit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That is so good. And when you start your business, you can get business credit and, let me yeah, tell you, that's, that's another. I was 23. By the time I was 24, mm -hmm. because of the stores and the business credit, I remember buying a van, zero interest on the business credit. Yep. Best deal. I could never get that deal as a young kid, just, you know, starting out. Yeah. But the business could. It was a corporation. As mm -hmm. far, and I remember buying the other properties. I rented the first wow. place, and bought the other properties, all with the business See? credit. That's and what so I mean. Learn about if you're starting at, at a certain <coughs> point, what you start and build, you think vending machines, well, you know, anything, whatever it is, you're going to start to establish business credit. Mm -hmm. You will be able to invest 
including buying a, a home or buying a, a business um, yeah. space. So keep that in mind and don't use that personal credit. That's that's really important. I love that yeah. you brought that up. <laughs> yeah, it actually is. And that's something that I do recommend people to like, go ahead and establish your, and I'm, and I'm learning this kind of late in the game, but at least I'm helping the next person. Uh, you know, go ahead and get your, your, you want to get that established. I do have some people that they buy machines on business credit, uh, yeah. come up with the, with the, with the vendor. Um, and you know, so, cause remember I said some of these people are already established business. Um, uh, but yeah, it's important. It's really important. <laughs> yes. That's wonderful. All yeah. right. Well, thank you again, Lakinia for thank being you. a good show and I look forward to learning more about it. So for those tuning in, we'll be back after these messages. Stay tuned. All right. <laughs> Overview of the Boots formula. In December of 2017, I lost my house, my car, and my cat due to a fire. It sounds like a country music song, but that was my reality. And yet another rock bottom situation after a long period of doing really well. When we're able to retrain our minds to focus on the positives, we're able to enjoy more of life, even while we're rebuilding and rebooting. We're going to starve those negative thoughts, not feeding them with our attention, time, or energy. When you focus on the good parts of your life, those things that you can be grateful for in this moment, that energy will bring even more good things your way. Contribute and utilize your unique talent. You're not thinking about the problem at hand. You're not showing up for approval. You're just being your best self. You use your rock bottom to set the direction for your life beyond this rock bottom situation. It's important that you are really honest about where you are in this situation. You can't lie because you don't want to give up your personal responsibility. You have to own every part of this and realize it could be worse. It could be better, but this is it. If you aren't able to be honest about where you're starting from, you won't be able to clearly see where you want to go or how to get there. Next letter of boots will help you answer that. The second O is for order of operations. The third step of the boots formula is finding the order of operations. When you're in a rock bottom moment, there are certain steps you know you need to take to get out of it, and you need to complete those steps in a certain order. T is for thinking. The fourth step of the Boots formula is thinking. If you recall your thinking at the most successful points in your life, it's probably vastly different from your thinking when a crisis brings you to a rock-bottom situation. Often, at the toughest times, our thinking goes to survival. We lose sight of the possibilities and opportunities that are before us. This is where thinking comes into play. It's vital to have a strong mindset in order to keep our boots on and walk out of a rough spot in life. Thinking leads you to a clear vision of where you want to go on that map of your desired outcome. You've made the decision that you're going to New York. Your bags are packed. You have an idea of how you're going to get there. You know the steps you need to take, though you may not know how the hell you're going to take them all, but you've made up your mind. That's where you're going. Tony Robbins often says, it's in the moment of decision that one's destiny is shaped. That decision is the thought that comes before the action steps required to reach your new goal. Everything happens in this step, in that decision. You can see it, feel it, embody it. Things start to show up because you're looking for them and you're open to them. You'll start getting the results you want just because that decision is in your mind. It becomes that real to you. Once you have that clear vision in your mind, you have to see yourself as if you already are living in your desired reality. You're just doing the steps to get there. S is for stepping up. The fifth and final step of the Boots formula is a literal step, stepping up. You've gone through the first four steps. 
You've decided how you're going to show up. You have a picture of where you're going. You know the steps you need to take, and you've made the decision to actually do something. It would be nice if you could just sit, think, and meditate your desired outcome into being. But that's not the way it works. There is some validity to the idea of manifesting what you want, but at the same time, you have to believe enough to actually go out there and take the risk. You have to overcome your fear of giving your first presentation, making your first speech, or writing your first book. You have to get out of your comfort zone, and you have to take those steps. S is for stepping up by taking the personal responsibility required for a real reboot. While the B in Boots is about being in the present with who you are in the situation, S is for taking those steps toward the future you want. Is not one size fits all, just like a pair of boots or a bra. So the formula is designed to help you through any situation. To grab a copy of my new best selling book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action. All right, I have found something magical, something new that I am loving. At this stage in my life, I have been switching to the cleanest, best, healthiest makeup, shampoos. Uh, facial products. So I did find a incredible uh, makeup line and they have been around quite some time. It is called Beauty Counter. And if you go to beautycounter.com slash Sheila Mac, S-H-E-I-L-A-M-A-C, or SheilaMac.com and at the top of the menu, look for natural beauty. That will bring you to the site where you can learn about the specials and give clean beauty a try. I am just loving the difference it's making in my face. And one of the things that was really bothering me was a lot of the other products. I, I could not find eye makeup that wasn't irritating. So this is really like one of the few products I can actually wear around my eyes. And so I'm really loving everything. It makes my skin feel really clean and fresh. And so give it a try. Again, SheilaMack.com slash natural beauty to learn more. If you are just tuning in, this is NBC's Sheila Mack Show here on KCAA Radio, the station that leaves no listener behind. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and I have some news for you. Yes, you. I'm celebrating my third year now on the station and will be expanding the show to a global network as well. You may now find The Sheila Mack Show on all major podcasting channels. And if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, all the episodes are now available for viewing there as well. And I'm asking you for a quick favor. If you like the show, Please help support the spread of this reboot channel on YouTube as well. My goal is to help as many people as possible through our interesting times to rebuild, reinvent, and reboot your business and personal life. I also wanted to share a little bit more about how I got here, what I do now, and how designing a business career and life on your terms is more than possible at any age or stage in life. I am an enterprisingly forward-thinking consultant, show host, and best-selling author. But how did I get here? Well, I began my career as an entrepreneur and property investment strategist back when I was 23 years young, when I boldly quit my government job with NASA JPL to open my first of five large gift stores while also starting to invest in property. I got to work with some of the world's most loved companies, such as negotiations on leases with Warner Brothers and winning trips to London as the top-selling Crabtree and Evelyn provider in the U.S. for multiple years. My stores were built on heart as I gave back to the community I came from. 
So now some of you know this and some of you don't know this, but as a young girl with parents who were not well enough to care for me, I was homeless at age 10, then in foster care where it was really hard to get a job while in the system. I finally emancipated at the age of 15 to start college early. While running my stores, I worked with a government program. Back then, it was called Job Training Partnership Act, making my stores an open source training site where close to 200 at-risk youth started their careers. Yes, I began my career helping business leaders and working professionals to design a life they love where they can have success in their careers and get to the business of life. See, a funny thing happened along the way. Uh, when I first opened my gift store, it was kind of crazy because I was this young upstart. That's what a lot of the store owners called me. Uh, my first store was in Montrose, California, in this sweet little hometown uh, shopping park with other stores and restaurants nearby. And so I was the young upstart that didn't know what she was doing. At least that's what everybody said. And I didn't really care what they said. <laughs> uh, I, at that age, you know, their opinion was like, I don't really care. So that, that was probably a really good thing because I stayed focused on what I needed to do. And I had negotiated uh, to lease out a 5,000 square foot gift store that needed a lot of work and I, I got free rent and uh, for about six months and I had to start making the rent, which was 5,000 a month, which was a lot of money back then, a dollar square foot. And so I had to learn and relearn. I, I finally did hire quite, quite soon in the game, I did hire a marketing expert, branding expert, I guess back then. And uh, that lady really helped me to figure things out when I first started. And when you first start a business, especially when you're young, it was like, <laughs> I had no idea what to do, but I needed to learn because my rent was gonna start coming due every month. And over that time, I started having more success. I did crazy things like, stayed open until almost midnight every night along with the restaurants who were very close to my store while everybody else closed shop at about 5 or 6 p.m. So I was making more money from the start and I just really, my store was to help my kids and the products I sold was whatever the community wanted. I sold lots of things to people in the entertainment industry. I worked with cruise ships. I worked with many different people in the community. And later on, the store owners actually came to me and asked me if I would consult them and help them. I actually started buying my other buildings because I didn't like the idea of paying rent for years and years and years and not building equity. So I did get my real estate license uh, through that and invested and bought my other four store buildings and uh, lots of the other store owners worked with me paid me <laughs> to consult and help them do what I was doing and I didn't really even know it was called consulting I just knew how to figure it out I guess and so that's how I started my career and now you know, I raised six children, all that, and now they're grown. And so I get to come to work every day and do what I naturally do best as an entre enterprising and forward thinking business leader. Through my show courses and live events, I guide entrepreneurs and working professionals like you through the profitable steps of building a business, creation to expansion, marketing from planning to implementation, wealth preservation through strategic planning and yes, real estate investing and lifestyle design so that you can earn more while getting back to the business of living your best life. So I do invite you to tune in here uh, to KCAA radio and also I would really appreciate it if you went to my YouTube channel, Sheila Mack Show and gave a subscribe and a listen to some of your favorite shows and I do 
have some other exciting things, including a free gift to thank you. So if you go to www.sheilamack.com, that's S-H-E-I-L-A-M-A-C, SheilaMack.com, there you can get a free gift to get started on your reboot this year. And now back to the show. Tune in again right here on KCAA, the station that leaves no listener behind. 